once again, <coughs> it's me. Uh, right now, I'm, if you don't know, I have another series up here on this uh, page uh, to do C++ programming. <coughs> And I'm sort of at an impasse right now. I find that when I'm kind of stuck and I'm not, I'm not sure where to go, that usually the best solution is to just sort of stop thinking about it for a while and do something else. So that's that's why I've been doing these these uh, sort of forgotten. Uh, tutorials I intended to do before. So uh, this one, this is one that uh, I thought I, I might, uh, might as well go through. And that's this idea of, um, you see this, well, you see this batch directory. Quite big, actually. A wide Even the Y view is too, too big to see it all. Lots and lots of stuff. Well, I can delete a lot of this actually. And I probably should. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thinking about which ones I can delete. Usually, anything that's starting with a Z, I can delete. That's the reason I, I'll, I'll put something with a Z at the end so that it will come up in the list first. That is last, meaning the first thing that I'll see. Well, this test targets. I see. Just trying to figure out switches. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to get to. What I wanted to get to is this idea of um, oh, definitely get rid of that. This idea of building a like a library of batch. Not files, but functions. Now I have some here in um, what I call my utils directory. Okay. And I used to have tons and tons and tons of these things, but, but I lost that computer and I lost a whole bunch of stuff. But, um, you know, like I would have something to do with strings, something to do with math, math.bat, and uh, <clears throat> uh, maybe uh, paths, you know, things that manipulate path names and so on. <clears throat> uh, and, uh, and and the way it works is, you see, these are, these are collections of uh, functions. So if you look in strings, probably easier. Okay, here's a function that checks if a string is blank. Here's one that checks if it's a number. Here's one that just checks if it's a hexadecimal number. And that, okay, that's all I've got. But I could also make one, uh, let's say, to uh, check the, the string length. Let's see if we could do that. Unquote is, unquote is, see, that's, that's not fully completed. That won't work. Completely. Let's see, um, 
The second argument would be the unquoted first argument. Let's see if it works. Set my string equals hello. Hello world. Okay. Now I want to call that function. So what I would do is I would say, in this case, string unquote my string Okay, is that all? Let me just check that again. No. So, the first thing passed in is my string, and the answer is going to be in it. So, my string, my new string. Hmm. Uh, now this this is gonna have percents because uh, it, it, it's just taking that literally, and this is an environment variable name. Let's see if it works. All right. There, see, my new string doesn't have quotes, and my string has quotes. So it works in that case. However, it's not going to work in this case. Set, where is that my string? Suppose I have quotes in the middle. Okay, now let's try it like that. It's uh, oh, it seemed to work. Either it worked or it died. So we'll change that text. All right, let's try it again. Unquote my string. No, no, see, it just didn't do it. It must have failed somewhere. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a problem. Same. My, my string has quotes in it. But it's, it's, bro it's, Broken it up. I'm not sure if I put close around this, maybe. No, it's just going to crash or something. Well, it sort of did something. Obviously, that one needs work. But how about maybe, you know, something simple? I want to find out how long that string is. So we'll make a, we'll add a new function to our library. Sterling. Okay. And, you know, put a little help file, a little help in front of it. Do I need to explain? No. Calculates the length of the string. Uh, you should always put, this is essentially return. Now, how do we calculate? Given that we're, now, see, the way this thing works is, it says call percent star. And what that is, is, um, 
it'll be call colon and then the list of arguments passed into this file. And the first thing will be a label. So if it's sterlen, it's going to call sterlen and with everything else that I typed in. So the first argument passed in here will be the second thing I send into here. And um, it doesn't need to be an environment variable. It could be just anything. So how do we go about calculating the length? Well, there is this thing called set. Now, let's exit this for a minute. Set has a like a substring type thing. See? You use a colon and a wiggle, and uh, it also has assignments. Let's try and ignore quotations for the moment. Quotation is the biggest hassle. Uh, now, if you could take whatever was passed in and put it into one of these environment variables, right, and then then you could extract one character at a time. See? So, like here, for instance, let me just um, <clears throat> just not set anything, but uh, well, yeah, okay, set. And string stir equals percent one. Forget about quotes for a minute. And then I could say echo percent stir colon wiggle. Now the way it works is if I just said one here. It's going to give me the string starting from position 1 instead of 0. Okay, so let's try string hello. It's called sterline in their function. So there you see, it echoed hello, hello. And if I wanted to make it easier to see like that, um, yeah, that should be okay. So let's try that again. Okay. Now, so you can sort of see, suppose uh, instead of echoing this, I did that. Okay. Now, at some point, uh, at some point, it's going to run. It, it, it's going to. If I if I now take this resolve and put it back into here, I can keep shrinking it down. See. Uh, I can echo it out. Echo. Screw one. And then set stir equals stir one. And then go to Again, clip again. So let's see if that looks right. So 
So I said stir. First, I start out with stir is where I passed in. Then stir one, I clip off the first character, echo it out. Now I set stir equal to stir one, and go to clip again, which is doing this clip. Now what I want to say, and I would like to say it actually at every point here, if nine percent stir percent, yeah. To check if that's empty, I've got to have something on both sides. So I'll just quit in that case. Right? So if, if the stir itself is empty, then I'll get A equals A and it will quit. So now, let's see what happens. Just running this. There, you see what happened? You know, hello, low, 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 low. Eventually, it, it echoed an empty string, which it shouldn't do. So, really, I'd like to put this echo, and then it'll echo stir instead. Okay, now it won't have a, a blank echo. Okay, how's that? Pretty cool, huh? Now all I have to do is figure out how many times that went around, and I got the length of the string. Okay, and uh, so, so we could set a counter here. Now, Usually, this would happen somewhere outside. I'm going to do this. Well, okay, forget the local. Set. Len. The string. Equals zero. Okay. Now. If I manage to get past this test, I want to increment the length. Use slash a allows arithmetic operations. So that means I can add one to the string len. And echoing it out for just for fun. Doing this thing again, go to clip again. And then when this finally dies, instead of just going to end the file, I'm going to echo this value out and see if it's the right number. If it's not the right number, it might be off by one. Five, it says. One, two, three, four, five. So, getting rid of this echo. So now I can get the string length of any string. That one's 23. The only problem is, if I put a space here, it's only going to get that one. But if I put quotes, well, I get a, now I get a mistake, you see? However, there's always a solution. First off, you get rid of the quotes like that. And that might actually be enough, but just so that this comparison 
doesn't get mad. Uh, you can put quotes back around it. But stir and stir one and everything won't have any, at least surrounding quotes. It's those middle ones which are tricky to deal with. And now that says 24, and that's probably right. Let's try something easier to figure out. Now that length, the length of that should be 4, and it is. Okay. Well, I could write a whole sentence here. It will tell me the length of that thing. So here I've used the string libraries function strlem and passed this in as its argument. So you see, now you can, you can build more and more functions. Like this particular one just print, printed out the length. Right. But really what you want to do is you want to use this in another batch file and have it set the length into a into some variable that you passed in. So you could say set percent two, let's say, the second thing passed in equal to the length and go to end of file. Now that might seem kind of stupid, but Okay. That's the, I can delete this later. I want this thing to just return to me the length of the string that I passed in as a parameter. So it's going to do call utils. And I have a An environment variable for that string stirlem and then the thing I passed in sent one which may have quotes so we got we'd like to get rid of them and put them back so that normalizes things. Uh, well, where should we? Let's try just percent one. And uh, we'd like this thing to return the value in two percent two, which we'll call uh, the length. And here's where that set local business is important. Now, this is an environment variable that I'm defining, but it's not going to exist in the outside world. After the program is finished, after the script is finished. So let's see how, if test works here. Test, hello. So it says fine. Still says five. Now it's eleven. Now is it the same? That should be four. It is. See now. Now I don't. Now that call to the to the library is hidden. And. You'll notice that there's there's no length len environment variable that got created because of the, because of the uh, set, set there. This this is an environment variable, but it's only local to this file, and I was able to echo it out. And this. Uh, String bat it 
has, has no set local in it, it's assumed that that's already been done. If you do too many setting locals, then things start to disappear. So here we've invented a new function. And uh, this doesn't have to have a special name. There's no... Well, let me get rid of that. It's gone. Test hello world. Okay. See, it, it didn't add a new environment variable. So it's up. It's up to us to choose any name we like. I would prefer to call it the link. 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 Probably link, link, link. Is that right? So uh, okay. <coughs> so now there's a new function in our in our library. <coughs> Unquote doesn't work very well. Check if blank is almost okay. Numeric and so on. Now in this, another one I have called conversions is the basis of all these these batch files. Like I have this one to convert to binary. Like I'm going to convert to zeros and ones. Some number. Like there it is in binary, see? And um, it also has a parameter. I suppose I want it grouped in, in, in groups of four bits, you know, at least four. It does that. And there's another one I have to decimal. Which I could take, for instance, some hex value. Change it into decimal. And this also has a grouping thing. You know, put a comma and stuff for me. And it's all based on, you know, these, it, it's, they're all in this utils. I call these con conversions, and I have basically they're all all those batch files use the same <laughs> use the same function convert to base converts decimal number to base whatever right and uh, disregarding the uh, with them even computing the string length. Now inside here there's a function that takes modulus and uh, now there's another function that converts from a base so you know you can convert to a base or from a base so I can convert from base for the have a This is a base 10 number, and I want to convert it uh, from, oh no, I'm, 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 this is some number in, some number, this is the base that it happens to be in, and I would like to change that to decimal. And so 64 base 16 happens to be 100. And then there's an evaluate thing, a uh, thing that changes to binary. This is the thing where I, I can do a, take the mod 
the remainder of a number. Text is, oh, uh, this description belongs in the other file. Check to see if the string is blank. So, now that's, uh, that's how you, you make, um, uh, you, you take things that you use all the time and, and put, you can collect them into a single file and use the, call colon percent star to go to the label and supply the rest of the arguments. One of them I have is this uh, see this cute little logo here? Well, I have a thing that can print to a print screen. And the way it works is it goes by pages. Now, this is 80 by 25, and that's considered one page. I can copy, I'm going to copy one page, starting from page zero. That's this, starts from here, that's, that's zero. And I have a secret spot where I, I copy these these two and I'm going to copy that to page three. But it's not page three. It's a special page three that's in a in a special area of memory that I can't tell you about right now. It's too long. Now I have another load phone. What I want to do is I want to copy that one to page either two or four. And now I have a thing called Saber. Yeah, there you go. See, it's playing them. It's playing them back. So I can I I can copy these a screen. And I don't copy the last two lines, so that's why you don't see that stuff that was there before. And I can recall them based on where I've copied them to. I could add another picture. If I had more. Oops. Uh, it's not very interesting. I have a Snoopy somewhere. Oh, I want to take it out. But it's too, yes, it's too, too big. I have to make the screen bigger. So I could cut that off. And now print screen, one page, from zero. Now I did two and three. So I'll put the other one at four, let's say. Now the way I wait at time is I use this choice thing here. So now this is recalling from two and three. I'm going to recall another one from four. And wait to this choice thing. <laughs> Print's supposed to print out a question and it has a timeout. 
and then I just redirect the question into the null device, which doesn't do anything. And let's see. We're going to get three pictures. There it is. See what I'm saying? Now how that works is a little bit of magic and I'll show you that magic next time. Okay, see you. Bye.